Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service this morning for the second Sunday in Lent. Um, today's service is brought to you from St Margaret of Antioch Church in Hinton Walrest and if you want to know more about that church you can go to our benefits website and to click on that church and you'll find out a wonderful and amazing history of this incredibly a beautiful but very small church in a, a small village in Oxfordshire. Just a couple of notices to share with you this morning. Uh, this morning's service is a come and praise service of the word and I'm absolutely delighted that Lucy is going to be leading this service for us this morning. Next Friday the 5th of March at 2 p.m is World Day of Prayer and we are having our annual World Day of Prayer service. That's going to be on Zoom only. We're not going to be putting it up on YouTube uh, to be watched afterwards. So if you want to join with us, you have to be there in the moment at 2 p.m. on Friday the 5th of March. If you would like the Zoom link for that service, please do drop us an email. Uh, again, the details are on screen for you, or you can find the link on the service listing on our website. If you click through and find that particular service, you will find the Zoom link for it as well. We're going to send that link out on our newsletters on both Monday and Thursday. So tomorrow and Thursday this coming week. We are hoping and planning to be able to return to in pew worship in church uh, in Buckland Church as of the 14th of March, which is Mothering Sunday. Please do watch this space, more details uh, as we come closer towards the time, but that is the plan. We will, of course, be continuing with our online services as well. I'm going to hand over to Lucy now to lead us in our worship this morning. A very warm welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. As we are gathered together, let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom, to whom all, all hearts, hearts are open, open and desires desire known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. As God's people we have gathered. Let us worship him together. And so, as we begin our worship this morning, let us acknowledge all those moments in our lives, in our words and in our actions, where we have not been our best selves. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. So let us come to him who knows our every deed and thought. We say together, Most, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We gather our prayers in the Collect for today. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, and by following his way, 
come to share in his glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Out of my sight, Satan, he said, you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples, and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the Spirit take my words and speak to each of us as we have need. Amen. 
Have you ever overheard the tale of a conversation and wished you had heard all of it? Or been the person speaking and realised that what you just said to one person was something that actually everybody needed to hear? So you might raise your voice and gather everyone together and make the point again, but in general terms so that everybody can, you know, get it. Rereading today's Gospel, it rather strikes me that that is exactly what's happening here. Peter has, in his wonderful fashion, frankly missed the point again. And Jesus is very firmly setting him kind of back on track. But perhaps Jesus realises in this moment that it's not just Peter who doesn't get it. Many of the others, of his other followers, don't yet see what Jesus is really teaching and what he's about. And so Jesus explains using a metaphor, a story. One of the things that I notice so often is that Jesus uses images and stories and metaphors to tell us spiritual truths. And I wonder if that's because spiritual truth is just too big to be literally translated into human words. Maybe we need stories and images precisely because the same spiritual truth will relate to different people in different ways at different times. So what it means for me is not necessarily what it means for you at this precise moment. And therein lies the power of what Jesus is saying. So if we unpick this metaphor a bit that, uh, of what Jesus is saying to, to Peter and to the others, we have self, the cross, life, and an idea of losing and gaining. Jesus starts by telling Peter that he's thinking in human terms, not divine terms. So that's probably what we need to work on first. We need to stop being literal. When I read this particular passage, I always think of the lines by William Blake. He who binds to himself a joy doth the winged life destroy. He who kisses the joy as it flies basks in eternity's sunrise. And as I think of those words, I always think of a butterfly which is very much helped by the fact that so often you see butterflies in churches. If I were to hold a butterfly in my clenched fist, I wish I had one right here to show you, but if, imagine if I had a butterfly clenched in my fist, trying to hold onto it and keep it as mine, I would in fact crush and kill the very thing I was trying to preserve and hold onto. But if I simply stood with my palms open, allowing the butterfly to flutter around me, landing and leaving as it chooses, watching its flight and its colours with joy, then I would in fact have the thing that I so wanted and the experience and the memory of its colour and beauty and its agility of flight. So it is in letting go of something that we often find that we're able to keep it. I find it's often the same with cats. My daughter loves our cat. She loves stroking her and cuddling her because, you know, the cat's soft and cuddly and, and lovely. But slowly, she is coming to learn that if she chases the cat and tries to clutch her and hang on to her, the cat is just going to run very fast in the opposite direction. But if she sits quietly, the cat will come over, because quite frankly, this cat is a total cuddle monster. The cat will then lie down beside her and purr, four paws in the air, tummy asking to be tickled, and my daughter is incredibly happy about this. But it's a learning process to let go, not to chase after the cat, and to just let it come to her. Sometimes we have to let go of something in order for it to come back to us. But that's really, really hard to do, especially when what we're being asked to let go of is our image of ourselves. 
You've probably, most of you, heard about the ego. It's that bit of us which is desperate to survive, to be the best, to beat everyone else. It's the bit that wants to be seen, which drives us to be confident or shy, to be silly, clever, famous, whatever it is that is our identity. This is the image we have carefully designed and created. It's what we want other people to think of us. And if we're not careful, it's what we think of ourselves. This is the self that Jesus calls us to deny. But I think an easier way of understanding would be to say to let go of it. This ego is the self that we have to recognise for what it is. It's the face that we show to the world. It's that perfect airbrushed Facebook and Instagram image. But it's not our true inner self. The ego is something we've constructed and built over the years. Every time we've experienced something or done something right or wrong, been praised or told off, been loved or rejected. And the ego, above all, is rooted in fear. But the divine self is the part of us that puts other people first. That self, the divine self, sees no division between people, but that everyone is equally special and loved by God. It's also the part of us that knows that we too are special and that God loves us. The divine self is love. And so when Jesus tells us to give up ourselves, I think what he's really talking about is giving up the ego, giving up the fear-based way of looking at life, ourselves and other people, giving up that perfectly airbrushed Facebook and Instagram image that we like to, well, if we're honest, hide behind. Because what's the point of having a perfect image if behind it we're actually really unhappy? That's not life, that's existence. That's surviving from day to day. Life is joyful and fun and full of energy at its best. Although I have to admit, in lockdown, that's been hard sometimes. But that brings me on to the next point. Jesus says, what's the point of holding on to a false image of life? Because actually you lose the very thing that you're trying to keep hold of. So this isn't literal life or death. It's about being fully and joyfully alive or surviving from one day to the next in fear and anxiety. I bet you've all been there. I have too. It's not fun. It's not nice. But when we are joyful, when we are full of energy, that is the life of the soul, the divine self that's about love as opposed to ego, which is all about fear. Jesus says, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. If we think we have to hold tightly on to everything, then we are in fact rooted in fear. Fear of loss, fear of not having enough, fear of not being enough. And the very act of holding tightly onto things because we're afraid will mean that we can't see or act from a perspective of love. But if we're brave enough, if we are brave enough to let go of our false images for the sake of being more like God in the image of God as he created us, then we gain something incredibly precious. In letting go of control, we let life and joy and coincidence and surprises in. We allow others to love us for who we really are on the inside without being afraid of rejection and we can love them too, fully and joyfully and fearlessly. That's the life that Jesus calls us to. But it's not something we can hold on to, like the butterfly that flits around us, like the waves in the sea, like the beautiful wildflowers in the hedgerows and the fields. We have to enjoy the moment. We have to let it go. And if we do, it will come back to us again and again and again. Amen. Let us join together in affirming our common faith in God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. We, we believe, believe in God, God the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. With confidence, let us pray to the Father. We pray for our church and diocese, and particularly today, we pray for Bishop Cavin as he is welcomed among us in the Dorchester area. We pray for the mission of the church through this Lent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all who are unwell not only because of Covid, but who've been in our prayers for some time. We pray for Jill Rayner, for Nick Wharton, Sylvia, Brenda, Little William and Bethany Douglas. And we pray for all who work in the health service, particularly as they have to persevere after all this time, even with the end in sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for grace to amend our lives and further the reign of God. And in communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, we pray to the Father, particularly remembering Baby Bluebell, Michael Latham, Doreen Broad, William Shirley, David Jordan and Arthur Rank. And looking forward soon to the Easter time when we remember Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence with prayer, fasting and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us gather up all our prayers as we pray with confidence as Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Let us give praise and thanks to God. For the love of God our Father, the maker of all, the giver of all good things, let us bless the Lord. For Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who worked and lived among us, let us bless the Lord. For his suffering and death upon the cross and his resurrection to new life, let us bless the Lord. For his rule over all things and his presence in the world, let us bless the Lord. For the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who teaches and guides us, let us bless the Lord. For the grace of the Spirit in the work of the Church and in the life of the world, let us bless the Lord. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, there is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. All your works praise you, Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom, and speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. Amen. God, you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love, and setting us free from sin, that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day. Take our lives, give us your peace, and renew us in the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We come now to the end of our service this morning. I hope that you've enjoyed your time with us today and that you felt uplifted and joyful in joining us in worship and hope to see you again next week. So we come to the blessing. May God, who works miracles in our lives, fill you with his Spirit and change you day by day to reflect his glory until that day when you see him face to face. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.